Hey everybody, how you doing today? Um, it's been about two weeks since I've owned these knives. Um, actually about two weeks for this one, maybe about a week for this one. Uh, since I've owned both these, I've been carrying the black G10 version of uh, the Spyderco paramilitary the most. I gotta say right off the bat, I've been uh, really excited uh, just owning these knives. Um, overall, uh, can't complain about them. But uh, in my uh, later review, I'll point out some things that uh, I, I wish were done maybe a little bit better. But for today's purposes, um, I'll be using this uh, Black G10 version for uh, my testing. I'm just going to go through some uh, minor tests here, nothing drastic. Uh, cutting up some cardboard, uh, some plastic straps, some speaker wire. Uh, slicing up some pop cans and some uh, pop bottles, that sort of stuff. So uh, after all that's done, I'm going to take this outside and uh, see what it could do as a sort of maybe minor bushcraft knife. So just getting right into it. Like I said, I've been using this knife and uh, have not touched it up uh, since I got it. So this is the basic factory edge and uh, how it's been wearing with use. And uh, it's been wearing really good. It still uh, slices phone book paper really easily and uh, really cleanly. Been really happy with how uh, the actual secondary grind, the edge, has been holding up um, with that factory edge. So uh, seeing the sharpness now, um, just do uh, some cuts through some cardboard here. Uh, with this thicker uh, blade stock, it's almost as thick as uh, the Spyderco Manix, or actually as thick as the Spyderco Manix. Um, anxious to see how it'll slice through cardboard, since my only experience with this uh, thicker blade stock has been with a Saber Ground Spyderco. Um, just getting into it, maybe I'll move this to the side. makes real easy cuts in cardboard. Um, that's been my experience with uh, flat ground knives. Um, really no resistance uh, to speak of when you're slicing through cardboard. The uh, factory edge when I got this was maybe a little bit uh, toothier than most would like, but it's sort of how I like to keep my knives. Um, all my knives I use, so I don't personally go through the time to get a, a, a very polished and refined edge to it uh, because it's always degrading because I'm using it all the time. Um, but the edge I do get is always uh, hair shaving sharp and uh, phone book slicing sharp. It's sort of almost like the best of both worlds between uh, razor sharp and toothy. You could see there through that cut that it bunched up. I mention this all the time with Spyderco knives. Um, that's this uh, choil portion of the blade getting caught on the cardboard. Um, I wish I had a better way to put in a sharpening notch um, without just using my uh, Spyderco Sharp Maker stones. But uh, that's really the only way that I've seen that I could possibly do that. When you're making cuts with the tip of this knife, that's, that's where this full flat ground I see really shining. You can see how it tapers there from uh, right around... This portion forward, it's almost the same thickness as uh, the full blade stock. But up near the tip is where you get your least resistance through slicing. This knife is comfortable in hand. Um, that's not coming to a surprise to anyone. Spyderco knives are uh, some of the most comfortable in hand knives. Um, no hot spots. Um, no hot spots from the pocket clip. Um, I have brought this outside once when I went on a walk with my girlfriend 
and uh, just stopped for a little bit and uh, carved on some, uh, I think it was pine or uh, juniper, one of the two, um, just on a little uh, stick about half a half an inch in diameter, just to see with that harder use how how uh, the ergonomics of this handle would hold up, and it was very good. I'll, uh, when I'm through with these tests, I'll uh, go outside and uh, do that for you. <laughs> just amazed <laughs> just amazed at how uh, how this slices through this thicker cardboard um, this is pretty much the exact same cardboard I use all the time um, you can see here that I get it in these uh, standard sheets so I could really compare from knife to knife how one slices so after, uh, I think that was two sheets, um, I didn't count cuts, so I don't know how many cuts that was. Um, you can see, still uh, slices phone book paper. You gotta slice through a lot of uh, cardboard to uh, dull out S30V, but uh, if you get the right or wrong kind of cardboard, depending how you look at it, uh, some of this stuff is so abrasive, it's almost like impregnated with like I don't know, sand or like emery or something like that, that you'll make a few cuts through it with pretty much any steel um, of S30V quality or under, and it'll dull it just in a few passes. That's been my experience. Um, you go to cut produce boxes and uh, you'll see what I mean. So uh, just getting some of this stuff out of the way. Maybe show you how... Uh, it push cuts through this speaker wire. This I like to do because it tests uh, the very edge of the knife and uh, basically tests the leanness of the grind. Um, if this knife wasn't heat treated right and it had like a, a very lean grind to it, it would chip out just from this minor use. Um, just because the heat treat wouldn't be right on. So when I'm doing these sort of push cuts with this uh, copper wire, I'm usually focusing on one portion of the blade just to see if I could sort of maybe force that to happen, if it's going to. Um, if the heat treat on this is right, it's not going to happen no matter how long I do this for. So... So I'll do a couple slices in the phone book paper around that area. And you can see there's really no, no uh, indication of uh, rolling, chipping, flattening. It seems to me, and uh, I've heard this from a few other people, that uh, it seems like uh, Spyderco might run their S30V on uh, the paramilitary a little harder than uh, most of their knives. Um, so moving on to uh, some plastic strapping. This stuff, like I said before, can be uh, really hard on your edge just because it is that sort of nylon material and uh, it's this sort of braided. My camera will focus sort of this braided, melted together nylon. Just uh, do a few slices through these. Test uh, sort of the lock on this. Uh, putting a lot of pressure on, on uh, the blade stop. See if uh, the lock moves over at all. I don't think it will. I'm actually pretty positive it won't. But I, I like to do this just in case there's anything wrong with it. Uh, through my use over the week and a half that I had this actual model of Paramilitary 2, um, 
None of the screws have come loose from use. Uh, no blade play has developed. Um, this knife was made in uh, December 2014. Um, side note, my uh, camo one was actually made in January 2015 of this year. So uh, Spyderco is coming out with their uh, this year of runs of uh, paramilitary twos. Just finishing up on this. If you could hear in the background a little uh, noise. Um, today's the first day of uh, the new season of Trailer Park Boys. Season 9 coming out. So I'm sort of watching this while I'm doing it. Uh, really awesome show. If you guys haven't checked it out, do so. Uh, this is the first day they had uh, Season 9 out. And uh, I was really looking forward to this coming out. So you can see there, it's still slicing through phone book paper. No problem. No hitches. I'm not having to work the blade through at all. So something that a knife has to be uh, sharp for and have a decent geometry for is push cutting. Um, push cutting paracord is especially hard just because all the tiny little stronger fibers. Um, this uh, I think this is nylon paracord is uh, actually a good test to uh, test the geometry of your blade and the actual sharpness that it's still at. So let's go see if we could do that these are just push cuts I'm not uh, doing any drawing and you could hear it snapping that sort of snap of that sound of the paracord being cut you could hear that is sort of what you're looking for you can see the very clean cuts it makes Maybe trying some draw cuts, testing the ergonomics. One thing I have to do is have to say though, um, with the paramilitary and also the Manix, um, the jimping, if you're putting a lot, a lot of force on it, can uh, wear away at your thumb a bit. It's not painful, but uh, over an extended use, I wouldn't call it ideal either. But for this sort of use, it's absolutely perfect. So you can see there, it's push cutting, no problem. Got to try some uh, some more draw cuts. Having a harder time doing this, just keeping the paracord still without my uh, makeshift cutting board moving on me. And usually for well, most of my knives, at least ones that I don't have a certain uh, personal connection to, we'll say, I'll use for pretty much anything I can. Um, one thing I've often used my knives for is to cut through these sort of plastic bottles. Um, it's harder on your edge because it, it tends to want to roll. It's not going to chip in this plastic but it, it tests, once again, the edge geometry. Um, just put some slices into this.
just let me wipe off the blade. Give you guys a close up. My camera will focus. There we go. You can see there's still no chipping, no visible damage. Um, grab another little sheet of paper. And you see there's no, there's nothing wrong with it. It's the wonderful thing about S30V. Um, it wears in a way that keeps it sharp. Um, the carbides that are exposed through wear uh, lend it to keep sharp. I mean, that's uh, the reason I personally love S30V. Even when it's not slicing phone book paper anymore, you can slice through cardboard no problem, slice through uh, anything that's not the fine tasks sort of thing. And uh, doing my usual test, um, this is something I, I, I don't do from a day-to-day -day basis. I don't go out of my way to do this. But uh, for my own knowledge, I like to see what what a knife will stand up to so that's why I do this so just putting some slices into this keep in mind guys all my knives are, are user knives so the scratches and the nicks in the edge the dulling and resharpening I will have to do that's why I really don't mind doing this plus it gives me an opportunity to do these videos <laughs> and an opportunity to test for actual factory defects. Um, I want to know if the heat treat on these uh, blades that I'm getting and paying for are on. That's one of the most important things. Um, blade play can be worked out. Uh, locks can be adjusted. But uh, I can't change the steel once I have it in my hands type thing. So uh, no blade play. The locks still exactly where it was before. Maybe if I open it, you'll be able to see that. <laughs> and uh, the action hasn't changed at all. It still requires that little wiggle wiggle to uh, get it to drop freely. But uh, testing for sharpness after those slices through the pop can. Um, don't really expect anything. But uh, we'll see, right? And you see there that uh, even after that, it's still phone book slicing sharp. Um, just taking a closer look at this myself around the camera. Doesn't even look to be like uh, there's scratches in the blade too much. Um, most of that will come off. There's a lot of dust on here from the cardboard still. But uh, that concludes the sort of EDC portion of this knife test. Now I'm going to go outside and uh, test this with some minor whittling and uh, minor uh, bushcraft tasks. So uh, stay tuned for that, guys.